Three weeks ago, our world was shattered by an attack on Israel to every Israeli and every American touched by these barbaric activities. We love you. You have to understand that. We love you and we're with you and we grieve with you. We share your anger and we stand with you 100 percent. Okay? 100. 110. 110 percent. Let there be no doubt the killers responsible for this horrible massacre will burn forever in the eternal pit of hell. They're going to burn forever. Long time. On that terrible Saturday morning, the world saw once again that the conflict between Israel and Hamas is not a conflict between two equal sides. This is a fight between civilization and savagery, between decency and depravity, and between good and evil. There is no comparison between a group that worships death and a group that cherishes life and cherishes our nation. Every single life that is lost in this conflict is on the shoulders of Hamas, Hamas alone. It's Hamas alone. And I think you have to really add in the word Iran. Iran. People don't want to talk about it. There can be no sympathy, no excuses, and no escape from these monsters. And we will, uh, we will do what has to be done. And yet Joe Biden's feeble first act, one of the worst messages I've ever seen sent out to bad people. After more than 1,400 innocents, including over 40 Americans, were murdered or kidnapped. And uh, think of this. We immediately announced that we're giving Hamas $100 million. We're going to give it to them into Gaza, but they take it 100 percent of it. If they don't take 90 percent, they take 100 percent. Mark knows that better than anybody. They take 100 percent, and we give them money hand over fist, and we've been doing that for many years. And then a speech was made declaring that if you support Israel, you must give billions of dollars for open borders in Ukraine. In other words, they want to wield it all together. And you don't wield it together. They have to all stand on their own, unlike Biden. He's terrible. Worst president in our history by worst president. He's the worst president. He's the most incompetent president. When I'm back in the White House, the United States will stand with Israel all the way, 100 percent, without hesitation, without qualification, and without any apology. We're not going to be apologizing. We won't be apologizing. We're not going to be apologizing. We will fully support the Israelis in their mission to ensure that Hamas is decimated and these atrocities will be avenged. They will be avenged. In many ways, they'll be avenged. I think even beyond what you're thinking about. Joe Biden's weakness caused the attack on Israel, pure weakness and incompetence. Everywhere he goes, Biden's weakness provokes war and death because, as history shows, evil only respects one thing, unyielding strength. You've got to be strong. Otherwise, they're going to be taking over and they're going to be doing things that you wouldn't even believe. When I'm back in the White House, America's enemies will now once again, and they're going to know it, that if you try to kill our citizens, we will kill you. We will kill you. I told them all that. We had no problem. You know, we had no problem. Three years ago, we had no problem. For four years, nobody even — this is unthinkable. I mean, I just watch and see what's happening. It's unthinkable. This couldn't have happened. Mark, couldn't have happened. Although you maybe were more deeply involved than anybody, but I don't think you even believed a thing like this could have happened, Mark. If you spill a drop of American blood, we will spill a gallon of yours. We do not — And we're doing it because we want to start peace. We're not going to start wars, but the wars have to be finished oftentimes before the peace. And if you don't do the wars, the peace doesn't happen. And if you're not going to be tough and ruthless like they are, it's not going to happen. We have to stop it. We have to end it once and for all. Under my leadership, we will not squander our strength by trying to build democracies or in quicksand of like we try to do. Let's take over a country and let's make it into a democracy. How does that work out? Not too good? Or turn Baghdad into Palm Beach. Palm Beach. 
doesn't work out too well. But we will use American power to deter those who would harm our people.